patient to work on. Now, this particular scan is not very good because you can see these large triangles in the meshes. But nevertheless, I chose this case because of a few things that I'm going to explain in a few seconds. So when you look at this, you'll notice that all right, um, we need, we, we want to make a model because we may want to print a model to put this um, um, implant guide on to, just to see if it fits correctly. Not everyone does it, but it's a good idea to start. Now, um, we're going to look at this mesh and I'll just do a quick model and um, I can examine the, the gap here. And <laughs> Oh, it's all right, I've muted, Michael. Keep going. Okay. So here, if if we put a sleeve in here into this gap, this edge is going to get into the way of actually making a, a nice um, a guide to clip in. The sleeve may even cut in there, and it's just going to cause havoc. So I'm going to make sure we're going to cut this away. The other thing I want to make sure is the fit of this thing. So I'm going to examine here, we've got a defect, there we've got a defect. So this is a scan of a model. Here we've got defects over there and also on the other side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in the model design and give this a quick smooth. So I'm going to select this and smooth this down. Okay. So um, this is just pre-work. Pre so we're going to just take that and smooth it down a little bit over here and maybe over there a little bit. And I'm gonna just smooth that contact because it is an awful looking contact. And while I'm at it, I'll just give it a quick smooth where I'm going to click my, put my arch cutting line because the way it is now, the, the mesh is just not, not very ideal at all. So we'll just take this and smooth it across like that where I'm going to cut the scan. So it, it doesn't take long, but it does help quite a lot. So Especially Michael, like that would avoid just, any uh, possible failures with the art cutting. Yeah, um, I wouldn't expect failures with this mesh, but while we at it, it's always good to have a good foundation to start off with. Then we're gonna exit and then I'm going to arch cut. Now I've mentioned this edge over here of this model. We want to actually get rid of that. So I'm going to get my arch cutting tool and then we're going to extrude it on the inside. And that, that does make sense because otherwise, like I've said, it's going to cause havoc later on. So I'm just going to go across like that. And we're going to cut this mesh. Perfect. We're going to join this on the other side and we're going to trim it. And we're going to click on clean. Okay. And then we're going to make our model upper base. Okay. Now, because we're putting an Im implant in there, I may want to make it a little bit more depth. So at the moment, there's not much depth. We're going to extrude this a little bit like that. Okay, like that. Perfect. Now, the next step we, we're going to do is we're going to go into 3D Slicer. And we need a, a, a part of, a, of the bone so that we can align this model to the, to the segmentation of the bone. And then we know we've got a, a good alignment to the DICOM. So I've preloaded a DICOM here. And we're going to go into edit mode. And this is the fresh, this is the edit. And this is like a threshold that we've got. And we're going to add a segment. We can call the segment bone or whatever you want to call it. Okay. And then we're going to go to the threshold. Now this threshold, it's a little bit of a, it's a little, it's, it's not an exact um, measure because we want to compromise, we, we, we want to compromise between too much noise and um, too little of a model. So I'm going to, be using the slider over here. And as I slide, we can see how this, 
this threshold, the segment can change. Now I'm going to view one of these and I want to make sure that we've got enough there. So the, the less you have, the smaller the model you, is going to be. So this looks about right, okay, it's more or less. It's like overexposure and underexposure. Underexposure will um, render a, a model that is deficient in some areas. Good point. It's a, it's a bit like um, when you're 3D printing, you know, you can get too long of a layer exposure. <laughs> it would probably may do a very similar thing, wouldn't it, Wolfgang? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm looking through the, the bone section here and I'm having a look. All right. Okay. So let's commit to this and we're going to click on apply and then we want to view this. So I'm going to click show show 3D and that, that'll pop up into my 3D work workspace. It just takes a little while to calculate. And this model is actually very helpful for the placement of the implant as well. So, so as you see, in, we've, this, we've in got, this segment editor, you can make multiple uh, models. So, so you, you don't, you know, you can now isolate another tooth if you wanted to and make another segment. Don't do it now. I'm just saying that uh, you, you're not limited just to having one segment, but you can go multiple segments. Yeah, I'll just do it now just to be thorough. And then we've got it on video. And those of you who want to watch this can refer back to that. So I've made a new segment. I've hidden the other segment. We're going to go threshold. And then we can set this other way around. So for example, we only want a tooth. So let's have a look at this one over here. We've only got a tooth there. Apply that. And we're going to view that as well. So we can make as many segments. Like you the other day, Wolfgang, you've segmented out a little nerve needle. I thought that was absolutely amazing. And that was incredible. All of that for AP sectomy. But hey, I'm just doing the CAD work. I'm not, you know, with I'm not but, sure if it's, but it's all possible, you know. It's it's just phenomenal what you can do. It's amazing what we can do. Absolutely is amazing. All right, so I don't know why this is taking a little while to, to come up. Here we go. So we, here we've got a model with only the teeth and those can, you can do whatever you want with those. Mm. But for now, we don't really need it. Mm. So I'm going to hide the segment away and we're going to be using this segment. So, oh, okay, where's, where's my teeth going to? That's an interesting one. It's probably, maybe what I've done is I've highlighted the, 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 the wrong one. So nevertheless, we need an ICP model to align it to. So because maybe because I've had this one um, um, highlighted, that's, that's what happened. So what I'll do then is I can export this. So we're gonna go over here, export, to STL, make sure you, you've got the correct folder and then choose it and make sure that you are using the RAS system. Some of the hospitals have the other one, the LPS system. So this is very, this is critically important. Otherwise your model is going to be a wrong way around. Okay. So we're going to export this. So we're exporting the, the teeth. Okay, so now that we've done that, I have previously exported the bone, so we can we can actually bring in either the teeth or the bone. It, do, it doesn't really matter, but I, I actually think we're going to bring in the bone because I'm going to show you why in a, in a second. So we're going to okay. So I think that was I think that was this one. So. Are there any questions related to um, segmentation and actually making models, STL models with 3D slicer? There may be, you may have tried this before or something. It would be good to answer questions at this stage until, and then we can proceed. Yeah, just a, a little bit. Uh, for comment, when you do edontelous cases, and when you try to align with the bone, um, you know the tricks to use a Lego piece. 
So yes. I tested it, and uh, it could be quite hard for some Lego colors to be uh, nice uh, socials. So um, I recommend using the white one or the, the really opaque one because um, the segmentation will be easier. So don't take yes, the, uh, don't take the bonus one. Mm. So they make mm. radio opaque as such, so you can align it better. But I have to make a study on the uh, check every color of Lego piece. <laughs> 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 just, just leave your, leave your children's Lego sets alone. <laughs> you get into big trouble. Oh, there, yeah. There's a question here. Uh, can we print the mandible uh, from this file? Um, yeah, you can, you can print the STL if you like, but it will need some cleaning up. And I think, Michael, you've made a video of that, haven't you? Yeah, so basically, um, like these little bits and pieces, we can clean the mesh, we can go into the model designer in edit mode, and then we can select a vertice and then just click on clean, and that will get rid of quite a few of these little bits and pieces, the islands. Also note that this specific model is 1,300,000 vertices, which is massive, it's huge. Now, th now these big models can slow Blender down. So we need to always be vigilant and, and be mindful of what content we have in the software because we don't want to overload it itself because it can get slow if you've got like a human skull in it. And if so, then we can reduce the model size just by in the model design and you click on the reduce file. Also, the porous areas need to be blocked out. Otherwise, it's going to cause havoc with your printing and it might leave bits and pieces of residue in the in the vat. So be be careful with that and just clean it up. Good point. Good point, Wolf. So I'm going to be locking this one because I don't want it to move. So when I click lock, it's, it actually takes all of these little locks and it locks it so that you can't move it. That's important just, just in case you make a mistake and you have your cup of coffee and all of a sudden your model moves somewhere else and your guide's going to be completely wrong. All right, so we're going to go and into the alignment module and align this. So this becomes our moving. We're going to name this moving and this is our destination. Then what we're going to do is we're going to place a few landmarks on, on this model. Now, actually what I could do is I could rotate this around so that I get a better visual of the landmarks. So I'll just take this like this, like using the G and the R key, something like that. Okay, click on place landmarks and I'll select a few common areas. So maybe one here, maybe, maybe over there. I'm going to place one maybe on the K9 and perhaps one over here. Okay, enter to secure that. Select your other one, place landmarks. Okay, so there's, there's one. Then there's. Okay, it, it press enter, then select both and perform initial. Okay, so this is the initial one. And then after that, we're going to then perform the ICP. So we're gonna perform ICP alignment. So you can see there's like little movements happening. And I think that's okay, all right? Now we can either delete the segmentation or we can keep it. I would say for now, let's keep it because we can actually view this implant inside the bone, which is super cool. Um, I'm going to lock this model as well so that it doesn't escape anywhere. It shouldn't go anywhere, okay? So then the next thing is, but this, this one we can put in a, I'll, I'll just put in another collection called hidden because we don't always need it. Okay, hidden, open the window, get the outliner window, check these filters, 
And I like using this one. It looks a bit like a TV screen. Okay, this one over here. Select that one. Now, what's the next thing that we need to do? We need to bring in a, a tooth from a tooth library so that we can actually analyze where this implant should go. So let's do this. Okay, import hollow, hollow teeth. That's the tooth library. So what tooth are we looking at? It's a, it's a one one. All right, so we're going to select the one one out of this. Choose. Here's the one one. And we're going to delete the rest. Select the tooth. And let's put it into position. Okay. So the, the good way of doing this is looking at from the top or bottom, then moving it, rotating it, and then placing it from the side. See, and then you just move it up into that, into that gap. So that's a fast way of moving teeth. We need, we need to scale this a little bit. Scale and rotate it. Can you put a mac cap onto that, Michael, please? Yes, I can. Uh, there was a question, okay. and I think it's a very good question, <clears throat> just regarding the ICP alignment module. Um, since we've um, added the landmark system, we needed to update the ICP full package add-on. So I think the old one was version 2. This one will be, I think it's version 3, but you'll see it. Um, just just um, delete the old ICP full package add-on and install the new one. So that's actually shown, we've included that in the first video of the module. So um, um, we've, we've had this question before, um, the landmark's not working. Yeah, so if it just needs updating, that's all. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've done this. We've got a tooth now. We want to see all of this in the diagram editor. I mean, that's that's the entire point of this exercise. So what I want to do is I want to emphasize object management. Let's just touch on that subject quickly because sometimes we may have 80 or 120 um, models on the outliner window. So we're using um, collections, which are like layers, and we're using colors, important, and we're using names. So, you know, if you've got a name, you can quickly search it in the search bar. So this is a very important to, to keep track of everything. You've got to manage these objects. Michael, can you just All reflect right. on that um, filter up there? That's quite important. Sometimes models are locked through code. Um, the filter up in the outline window. This filter here. Yeah. So up top here, there's a filter like this. And sometimes in my coding, we what we do is we disable these things, but for a good reason so that you cannot click on it for, you know, because we don't want you to by mistake click on something and it, you, you shouldn't be clicking on it. So, but if you do want to click on it and you you're clicking and clicking and clicking and nothing's working, you will see that one of these there has a little, it's disabled. So if it's disabled like this, you may hear my mouse, nothing's working. Enable it and then off you go. Okay. Thank you. So, okay, so this tooth, we want to put a bit of transparency in it so we can actually see through it. Likewise, with this one here, I'm going to add a color and just put a bit of transparency in it like that. That's the alpha value. Okay, so when you shift this, it becomes more or less transparent. All right, so it gives us a, a good benefit when we actually placing these implants. Next thing is we want to port this to our other program. So what we're going to do is we're going <clears> to <throat> select both of these and we're going to one off transfer. But before we do this, we need to enable, we need to click on the server so that it opens up the server. And we need to go to the other add-on that we have in the 3D slicer, which is called link 
slicer blender and then we click on connect now the two are talking to each other um, for some reason um, in very few cases we've noticed that they don't talk they don't chit chat together and that's because they're using the wrong telephone numbers okay because it's been used by a different program so this port number is 5959 and on the left hand side it's also 5959 so if that if if it doesn't communicate you would put a number there the higher the better because the computers are using a lot of these ports with different programs so if you go like up to 50,000 or 59,900 and whatever just think of a number add this port number and put the same port number on the left hand side and then they will click and start talking to each other okay very seldom I think it's only been twice that, you know, that this has happened since we've been running this, but then it's yeah, just something to think about. Out of pure coincidence, another software has used that number. I think that's absolutely incredible, but uh, it's, it's an easy fix to do. Yeah, so we've done the one of transfer and that's ported across perfectly. Now, last week <laughs> I had problems with porting and it was a bit, uh, you know, uncomfortable for me uh, over Zoom because this thing wouldn't show. And this is because I had tried the new version of the, the Slicer Blender link and it wasn't working. And I only noticed today why, why it wasn't working. So, you know, I've, I have fixed it, thank goodness. Wolfgang, we, we don't need to sweat tonight, I don't think. I don't talk to Zoom. <laughs> you ambush. You're ambushing yeah. yourself, Michael. <laughs> Let's hope not. Okay, so the first thing we do is we need to check the the alignment to the diagram. And if it's not aligned, please don't go ahead with it because you know the angle is of your implant guide is going to be incorrect. So what I'm looking for in particular is that you can actually see the out line of these. Now in, in 3D Slicer we can grab a crosshair, so a basic crosshair for example, and then we can click on shift on the keyboard and as we're moving the mouse it'll move alongside wherever all the slices are going to move. So here I can see on the left hand side and on the right hand side we've got a pretty good alignment here. Can I just reflect on this Michael? I've had a yes. case recently, um, one of the quadrants had metal scatter all over the place. So please use scan markers like Lego pieces or other other scan markers because this, this can cause real problems with your alignment of your, your guide. And to avoid that, if you see massive scatter, please, you know, you've got to use markers there. Good point there, actually, Wolfgang, with the markers. Because then we're not relying on the actual teeth for alignment. We're actually relying on like a Lego piece or a marker for the alignment for a dentulous or scatter. Yeah. So you, that's it. Then, then I, metal markers and that. Creates... That was a nightmare. Honestly, they have they have taped these little ball bearings to a denture with tape or something. And there was just scatter everywhere. It was it was an absolute nightmare. Please don't ever do that. Mm. All right. So um, so let's continue with this. Um, what we want to do is I want to see my hidden hidden here, and we're going to bring in an implant. Now we've got two two types. We've we've got a generic um, tapered and a generic. Um, cylindrical one which you can we can use uh, but then you would need to match up the measurements close to what your actual implant system is because if you've got a cylindrical one and it's 13 millimeters long and you know 4.3 by 4.3 or something you would then match it I'll, I'll just quickly bring one in just to demonstrate so this is a, a, a cylindrical one over here and then if you wanted to change these dimensions, you'd then put like 4.3 or whatever your, 
your diameter is and if it's an eight millimeters or whatever. So that, that's one way of doing it. If, if we don't have the implant set that you would like to have. Okay, let's delete, let's delete these. Or we can bring in the implants that we stock at the moment. And we've got quite a few. Wolfgang, you've done a really good job in providing these with these implant companies. Yeah, I've got Camlock that will um, in include next week. So yeah, as well. So if you've got the component module, you can now select. And okay, so well, and I, we've, Southern Implants is really good. I think their their meshes are beautiful. I've had a look at them. I I can't floor them at at all. Actually, Wolfgang. Yeah. I've managed to create a lot of assemblies when it comes to abutments or scan bodies and analogs to avoid, um, you know, searching hours and hours through catalogs. Often, you know, my background is crown and bridge work. And when you get an implant component, just sourcing these is just an absolute nightmare. So I've tried to do all the hard work and create assemblies for people. And, you know, the thumbnails are quite handy to have there. All right, so I've just randomly chosen one. Um, you need to know exactly which one you, you're looking for. So I've, I've just picked one for now, just for the purpose of this video. That's a Medentica. And if you don't know you, uh, the, the dimensions when you import it, you can go to the item menu and it'll say five by five by 11, okay? Mm. All right, so, yeah. Yeah, so on the web page there, um, you'll see the, the uh, a link category, and you can then it will press those hyperlinks. That will take you straight to the catalog as well. So if you're looking for Medentica, uh, yeah, there's a full description of those. Yeah, if and if you don't have if if we don't have the implants that you want to have, but you have stock of these in STL file. We've got conversion videos of how we did it. So we're not advocating that you copy it, but we just demonstrate how we have done it to make it compatible with what we are doing. So you can have a look at these videos and they can be found in this video tab when you click on the videos up top here. Uh, every module has that. That'll give you additional resources to videos. Yeah. And, and playlists for the actual, the implant guys got a, a lot of videos there, stackable guides and all sorts. So there's two things we need to do once we've imported it. One is we don't move this implant around the place. Leave it where it is because it needs to create the sleeves and cylinders and safety zone and everything. If you start moving it now, it's just going to muck it all around, okay? So we're going to click on accept your implant. And this is what I mean. We've got a safety barrier of two millimeters and you can change this. If you don't like the safety zone, we can show you in the video of how to delete the zone and make a new zone of more or less or whatever you want. So we're very flexible with the safety zone. We've got an angle as well, which I'm going to demonstrate in, in just a minute. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> we're going to rotate this around and we're going to move this for an initial placement. Note that this is color coded blue. <clears throat> the other ones are, are, are yellow and green. Now this one, you cannot select anything else. So don't be worried that you'll select something wrong. We need to select this implant to move it. So you cannot move it by doing this. You, you actually have to highlight it. It'll show you an orange and then you can move it using the G and the R key, okay? So we're gonna use G and it's got like a buckle notch there, a label notch so that you can figure out with the abutments where the surface area, where this angle will, like an angled abutment will deviate to or fro from that notch. This is why we've got that notch so you can place it exactly where it should go. So let's sync this one into, into position. So this is just a quick rough indication in Blender to see what's going on. So here we can see the bone, which is absolutely 
cool. I'm going to use the R key to rotate and the G key to put it in. Okay, so maybe we could have had a narrower implant. Again, like I've stressed earlier, I'm not an implant surgeon. This looks a little bit wide, but for the purpose of the video, you know, um, we, we'll just go with this for now, if that's okay. Um, just so we can get through it. So, okay, so what we're gonna do is we can see it's going through the incisal surface over here. But what I do wanna check is I wanna check in the actual diacom, what's happening in the diacom over here. So this is already ported through into the diacom planning. So as I scroll my mouse, I can see this implant over there. So shift, left click, and we can have a good view of this. Okay. Now, to get a better view of this, we should actually make a curve going around so we can see the slice actually going around and this is the next add-on that we're going to be using and that is called the slicer panel and Georgie has spent a lot of hours making this um, for, for us which is absolutely a fantastic tool to be using. So we're going to click on the, the um, volume that we're using and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a curve going through the bone. So I'll go sort of midway like this. We're going to grab the open curve and we're going to make a little bit of a curve going like this. And then when we, when we click on the, the curve, so we're going to select the curve. You can have as many curves as you like, by the way. So if you want to do something else, you can put more curves or an upper or lower or something, and it will flip from one to the other. So as we're doing the transverse and we're moving the slider, I'll just explain this a little bit more in depth. Notice also that the mouse moves are different in this program. So that gets a little bit confusing if you if you don't know how this works. Okay, so I'm going to move this. I'm I'm looking at the lower the lower side over here, and I'm moving that in cross section with my my implant over there. And if I wanted to tilt it, I like using one slice only. We've got more slices. So if the tangential, we can move the tangential, and it's usually around about ninety degrees. Okay, um, so if I look at it from the above, that's like sort of perpendicular. And then we've got another one, which is the actual angle, which will then move this one into, um, in, into a different angle. I've just got a quick question, Michael. Um, yes. The curve, um, are we able to lock it? <laughs> and I, I see the point because I have, many times accidentally dragged one of these little dots away and the curve is messed up. I don't know if it's possible to lock. I'm going to ask Georgie if we can lock this curve. I, I think, think that's, that's a valid idea. point. Yeah. That like is that. a very, very good idea. So yeah, I do. I totally agree with you. I think that should be locked, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So as I've said, I like actually using one slice. So if you want to, if you want to get rid of all, this is a lock which locks all of these slices in here. So if I if I click on this and I click the eye closed, all of those will disappear. So if I wanted to only see one slice, for example, just say that this this one here, I will then I will then unlock this one and then this one. So it only brings up the one slice like that. And if, you, if you're moving this around and you're losing track of it, you can always click on this little icon here to recenter the, the slice. And using the cross That's here is, is easy. I'll do that. Mm. The cross here is, is easy and it's, a, it's quite important. Now in Blender, we've got these little tools over here and that's for fine tuning. So if you wanted to move it a little bit like we, we're talking about like teeny weeny little bits. Let's just make it more visible on both sides. 
but uh, let's have a look at this, this specific one over here, like that. So if we wanted to move it like a teeny weeny bit, so we can see the, the axes, the red is the X, the, the X axis. So if I go on the, the red, you can see how it's moving on this side here. And that's by 0 0.1 millimeters or something. So it's very, very small. Every time you click it, it will move just a very, very teeny little bit. Okay. Or we can rotate it as well. So if I wanted to rotate it like this, or like that. Okay, so that's that's quite helpful to have as well. All right, I'm not going to um, talk too much about this because this is a surgery um, planning thing, and I think you guys probably know uh, better how how to do that. So if we move it up on the z axis or, or, or whatever. All right. So are there any questions other than that related to the diacon uh, planning? Actually, what we could do is we could just put that angle, we could put that angle in there because it's coming out of the, the, lab, the incisal surface here. So what I'm gonna do, make sure that the implant is selected and I'm gonna click on create abutment angle, okay? So that, what that does, it brings in uh, like a pink one over here. And when we use the R key, it's going to then rotate like this. So depending on what angles you get, so I'm not familiar with your implant system. If you've got a 15 degree angle or seven or whatever it may be, you will then put that in there or you can actually see it on the, on the actual diacom here, how this angle is. So this is, this is just an indication like that. Okay, yeah, so we've got that. I actually have an abutment ASC flex, which um, I think it's indicated to up to 25 degrees, I think, from memory. <laughs> and nevertheless, um, you can work within those angles, within that range, which is quite helpful. But of course, they, they supply a different screw, screw head and a um, separate tool to be able to, to secure the, the implant, the, the crown at least. All right, so we've got this and um, we're going to continue. We, we finish with the, the 3D slicer. Um, what, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the guide and I'm going to hide this hidden one. We don't need that anymore. And the first thing that we do, well, we can close the server if we want to. You don't have to, but we, we can close the server. So you can close it, stop slicer server. We're going to delete zones and start, which deletes the actual zone. And it, now we can start making this whole thing. And it'll prompt us the tool tips there appear for 200 seconds. So it's, it's enough to have a you know, sip of whatever you're drinking. And um, then you can actually read and it tells you what to do if you do get lost. So it says select and set drill diameter. So I'm going to be selecting this and you have to click on this one for each one. Okay, so let's just click on that. And notice that the sleeve has moved to the bottom or the, the top of the implant for good reasons, because then we can put our offset there. So just say you have, this depends on your, if you've got guided surgery drills, I don't know what you're using. This could be like, I don't know, hypothetically, I'm gonna put five millimeters here. Okay, <clears throat> for guided drills, for example. Then what we're gonna do, once we've set that in there, we're going to then move the sleeve, the sleeve, we, we click on this, and then as we move this, it'll incrementally go up by 0 0.5 millimeters. So this is the offset between the top of the implant and where the top of the sleeve is going to be. So a lot of the implant systems are nine millimeters. So I'm not familiar with what you have. So just say, I'll just put nine millimeters in there. All right, so with, with, say, with having said, actually, you know what, I'll just hide this tooth because I don't, I don't need to see this at the moment. So 
what we can do now is we've set the, dr the drill, we can scale this little sleeve up. Notice as a scaling, it's scaling from the top of it down. So it's not affecting my offset, which I've put in, okay? So, and maybe we'll make the model so that we can actually see it better like this. Okay, so that's better. We can scale this by the Z, S, Z, like that. And if we want to be creative, we can even scale it in different directions. No one says it has to be round. Yeah, so we can even scale it like this if we wanted to. And sometimes it's good because then we can come through with our implant um, tubing or whatever it is, and we've got something to grab onto already, which is quite super cool, I think. I could have placed this imp implant more to the left hand side as well, but it doesn't matter for this video, we'll leave it like that. Okay, so um, I'll just scale it a little bit less in that direction like that and save. Always, um, always save your files as you're going. Now, the following, the following menu here, the top here, we, we've got a choice. We can go the auto hole and sleeve, which takes all of these default values. So if I click on drill clearance, it's going to make a little blue layer around it. That's so that your drill is not too tight and not too loose. So if you're printing your guides and they are too tight, then you will put this clearance instead of 0 0.1, you change it to 0 0.12 or something, or if they're too loose, you're going to change this clearance. Okay, and then you're going to apply that. Sorry, one back. We're using the top menu here. So we're going to apply that. And then we're going to trim the drill like this and make a hole. All right, so that's, that's made our sleeve. Now, Okay, I'll just go back to show you the shortcut, how that works. So all you need to do is click auto hole and sleeve and that does it. So if you've got six or eight or whatever, it does that very fast. Because now we default? are able to... Sorry, what is the default offset when you press auto? 0 0.1. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, we're ready to make our guide. I'll just have a sip and perhaps if there's questions, it's a good time to ask now. Yeah, the question is auto hole means no offset. No, that's incorrect. There is an offset that is 0 0.1 uh, millimeters is the default offset. So if, that, if you find the drill isn't spinning freely because of the printing setting and expansions, go back and just do it manually. That's set in code. <laughs> I have asked, I've been asked to, if they, if you can put your default value in permanently, you can do it with coding and I'll make a video to demonstrate how to change this code and it's very, very simple and then it's always set like that. But if you update the module, it will be gone because our module, uh, it's, our modules are a replacement on your computer. So it'll delete everything and put the new scripting in there. But it's it's like two steps away. It's very simple to do the default values. Okay, so the next logical step here is to make a blocked out model. And we really need a blocked out and an offset model. So we're going to go into the block out module. And here we're going to name this upper, which it's an upper model, we're going to create the offset model, which is a tiny offset around the model. So it's expanded it by 0 0.2. Now, if you're milling a guide, that could be way less. You know, some people use 0 0.05 or whatever it is. This is something that you're going to have to experiment. We don't have control over your equipment and your materials. Then we're going to apply that. It'll remesh it. And this is more a blocked out um, module um, tutorial, which we've got in the video. So I'm not going to explain myself with this in particular, except for the surveying. I think we need to just touch on that. So we're going to survey this model. And here we're going to survey. Now, this is a bird's eye view of 
how this is going to fit. Now, there are some softwares I've heard that are fixed from the top down. So let's look, let's have a look and see what the top down actually looks like, like it's this. So if you're making a guide, for example, over here, you'll have air gaps between the teeth. It's not a good situation. And then I've heard that some softwares are set at, what was it, like 30 degrees or something, isn't 12, it? 12 or 30 degrees. Let's, let's put 30 degrees. So here we can see a standard of 30 degrees and this would be zero. And here we're chopping away space on the side. Okay, so again, it's not ideal. The ideal thing is to be able to move this around to get your ideal block tight version. So I'm looking at the gap. So, and I'm looking at the mesial and the distal, the contact areas, and I'm moving it so that this is going to fit nicely in between there, in between those two. I would say this is quite good. What do you think, Wolf? Yeah, we don't want to compromise the implant, the region of interest whatsoever. And also the guide needs enough uh, tooth contacting surfaces to, to fit correctly without excessive un undercut block out. So I've clicked on create passive model, and this is the model we want to use. We want to use one without any undercuts in it. So we'll just wait for it to um, generate. All right. So it will have flipped it because it's flipped it to its original position, okay? Because we've rotated it. So don't be alarmed. Also, it is not in edit mode, it's an object mode. It looks like edit mode, but we can see up top left hand side, it says object mode and it's a voxel remesh. Now, a lot of people have asked why we've got that step and it's quite easy because if you're blocking out miniature things like orthodontic brackets or something very small, that 0 0.2 is not going to suffice. We need to have a different offset that could be 0 0.05, like extremely small. So the larger an object, the larger this voxel size is going to be. Okay, but 0 0.2 seems to be accurate enough. So I would suggest leaving you, it. You're that. actually casting an eye on the vertex count below as well, aren't you, Michael? Because if I you do that. remeshed it at 0 0.1, that will radically increase the data file, file size, isn't it? Well, you know, with, with a little bit of practice, you can actually see what is acceptable and not. You know, if the model appears black from this distance in edit mode, it's way too big. Okay. Yeah. So it depends. All right. So we've got this beautiful, and I'm, I'm a little bit upset with myself because that implant should have been more to the left. But nevertheless, nevertheless it's all good. This is a Zoom session after all. So, okay, um, we, we want to now make this thing. So I'll just hide this tooth. We don't need to see it again. So I'll, I'll press this, like it looks like a bit of a TV screen that hides it. So when I click on Alt-H, it doesn't unhide itself. Now let's make a little bit of a guide. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to call this target model because it's a target model we're working on. Okay, we're going to go, we can either paint it or we can use a tube system. So for tonight, let's use a tubing system. Target model, <clears throat> shift right click to put your cursor to the starting position, click on the dropper, and then it's going to wrap around that specific model. Notice that it's, if I use the E key, it extrudes out like this. Yeah. And if you look carefully through it, it actually penetrates into the model. So you can, you can change this by using this one. Okay. So if you only wanted to touch a little bit, because you don't want to weaken it, you can select that. <clears throat> if you are laser sintering metal, for example, you would, you could 
go A and then control A to make this very small, okay? So this is something that you have to consider of how thick you want your, your material to, to actually be. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll just set this back to like that. Okay, um, maybe we should make this a little bit bigger, thicker like that. Okay, all right, so how you design that is up to you. So we're going to just make a quick design here. Now, now some of you, um, I think Mich is Michelle here. I think he likes going through the tooth, I which so. I think is a it's a really really cool idea doing that through the tooth, which we can do. I think it's a little bit thin, to be honest. Wolfgang, what do you think? Uh, just for this demo, it's okay. All right, we just fuse it. I'm going to go A and control A to thicken it up like, like this a little bit. So if you wanted to go through the tooth, for, for example, you, you, can, you can just look for a vertice on the other side. So this one, and let's just move this one like that and then join the two up like that, F like that. Okay, so here the same thing there and there and F like that. Okay, so that actually brings it through the <clears throat> through the tooth. Now I do want it to contact on my sleeve as well, so I'll just use a G key like that. Okay, I think that's okay. Can you just talk about the relaxation of this live tool that we've got, the tube? We mentioned that in the videos, how you're trying to relax the, the mesh as such. Yeah, if you've got something like that, you, we, we want to try and avoid that. So just use the G key and then just, you know, G is to grab and then we just space it out a little bit accordingly, okay? <clears throat> so it's, it's, quite, it's quite easy. Well, once you get the hang of it, it's actually not, not difficult at all doing this type of work. And you can, it's fun. You can make combinations between a paint-on system, like a closed mesh design and a tube skeleton. So you can combine the two, so it's quite interesting. Maybe we just touch on that quickly. So, okay, we're going to remesh this, and I'll put a 0 0.3 voxel and accept. So if we wanted to put another design on there, just say we want to add some more, just say we want to put a layer on it, we make sure it's selected, we go into uh, paint on layer, and then we can easily just paint something on the top of it. So we can just take this, paint over the top. So we, we can be very creative when it comes to these, these designs. We'll just cap over the top here like that. So the design is completely up, up to you how you're gonna do it. So we're gonna accept the layer. And then we're going to um, voxel remesh this layer. Now we can we can smooth it down um, as well if we wanted to, but I'll just leave it like this. Then we need to join these two. So with that being selected, shift left click to select the other one, join this, or you can use a shortcut Control J on your keyboard. That's Control J. Otherwise, join it here, and then we're going to voxel remesh it, remesh the tube. Okay, and then let's put 0 0.3 and accept. So this has become part and parcel of our system. Okay. Can you make so, a hole into that top surface as well, Michael, with the kind of thing? Yeah, we can do that later when we're finished. Um, we can do that as well. I, I can actually make that a bit later if we have time for it. All right, so the next thing is while we were working and doing all of this thing we've created these amazing cutting tools behind the scenes so i can expose these now please update your modules because this is a coding that i've scripting that i've changed today because this specific one was a little bit as soon as it, behind the scenes it was a little bit large it, large as in it, it looked something like this, 
Okay, so now it is exactly spot on with the dimensions of our actual thing. Now this one we use to clear away any ex excess. At the moment there is no excess, but if there was excess, we would have cleared that away. One more thing I just want to engage in is if you want to change this still, you've still got a chance. Go into edit mode, select what you want to use, make sure the proportional editing is on, use the G key and your mouse wheel, and then we can shift this accordingly. So it is not too late. You can, you can still manipulate this mesh and put it where you want to put it. Okay, <clears throat> so unfortunately we don't have an overlap. I'm going to create a bit of an overlap just to show how this actually works. So I'm going to use a G key and move it like that. Perfect. Now in, in this last update, well, it's probably a week ago, um, previously we, we would have to expose these cutters then you select the cutter and then click on clear guide. I'll demonstrate how that, how, how that works. So we can scale this and then we can just click on clear guide and that will then take away that, that nip that edge away like that. But now in this, in this later version, we've got a new system where you don't actually have to look at these whole cutters. We've got these menus here. Simply select your, your guide and then use all guide cutters. So it will use all the guide, guide cutters which intersect this specific object. So it will detect all of the intersections. It will isolate all of the objects and then it will Boolean cut all of those objects out. So we don't actually have to think about what we have to cut from what. So we're going to click on use guide cutters for selected objects. So that will then get rid of that. So this is especially useful with multiple implant sites. Especially when you do stackable implants, for example, it's a very useful thing. And then we've got use all hole cutters for selected. So make sure it is selected. Okay, and then it will detect everything that's intersecting. And that's really cool. And that works for the st st stackable attachments as well. It will clear away all of the, the intersections in the actual attachment. As you can see, it's worked nicely. Okay, um, now this is almost ready to, to export for printing. We're gonna then, um, this is that. also, Okay, so yes. I've just got a quick question here um, regarding fixation pins and uh, the cutting part is eight millimeters and the outer fixation part is 12 millimeters. How can I apply this here? So could you maybe bring in a fixation pin just to, you know, not necessarily connecting it to the guide, but you know what I mean, Michael? Just yeah, okay, so I didn't quite understand the question, but let's bring in a fixation pin. So we're looking at up top here where we've got fixation pins here. <clears throat> Use a G key to position it, so over here. Okay, and we, we're going to, okay, what was the question now? I think the, the cutting part is eight millimeters. Can I use the video to talk? Yes, yes, please talk. See if I can activate your microphone. What? Hi there, Samira. Okay. okay. Yes, we can. Uh, my, my question about the fixation bins here, um, I'm having an fixation bins with cutting uh, part Excellence is eight millimeter, and the outer part that is um, uh, getting through the guides, uh, the outer part of the, uh, the outer part of the guide is twelve. Huh? Uh, so, how can I apply these numbers uh, into making the fixation bins in the guide? 
Ja, verpasst den Anfang, so ein Scheiß. Okay, did you got it, Michael? So, All right, so the, the diameters of the fixation pin, uh, the dimension is eight by 12, which is quite a broad. I have, I have made it, I, I, I don't know how to make it uh, with fixation then, so I, I put an emblem yeah. with the um, mm -hmm. diameter and length. Uh, and I made the offset 12. Um, I don't know if it is okay to make it with fixation bends, but I tried to make it with implant with this diameter and with these numbers. Okay, so the, oh. off, the oh. offset oh. is 12. Yes, and the diameter was two millimeter. Okay. And the length of the small implant I have made is uh, eight. Uh, that was my way or trick way to make the fixation bends with this way. My question here is how to make it with the tool uh, called here fixation bends. Uh, instead of putting small implant like uh, I have done in this way. Okay. Is my question clear now? Yeah, so you use the implant system to create a fixation pin. And you want to see if you can use the fixation pin feature on the menu to create that. Yes, that's true. That's what I mean. Okay. Can you set the fixation pin sleeve, Michael? Uh, the fixation... Uh, offset? We... No, we don't have an offset for the fixation pin. The, the only thing that we, we can do is when we, when we apply the auto fixation, so I'll, I'll click on this auto fi fixation over here, and that will bring in the, like, a, like a sleeve thing, like this. Yes, yes. And that's, that's, that's already made a hole through it. You see? Yeah. Or what, or what we can do with the fixation pin is we can, we can do it the manual way. I'll just show you here. So maybe this is something we can plan over um, a different session to see exactly, because I don't quite understand what you're wanting to do. Okay, but, that's, um, that's okay. Do you want so to, this is, this do you is want to reach a certain depth with the fixation pin? Yes, how can I control the depth of it? Is... Okay, okay so, so we actually have to determine how, um, how long the fixation pin maybe is. 20, eight in the bone and 12 uh, from the top of the sleeve to uh, the entry point in the bone. The so whole length is 20. So this, this, this is meant to be 12. Yes, yes. So yes. this so scale by the z direction. Can you see over here? Yes. So so this this should then be 12, 12 mils long, but of course it's already penetrating through the bone. We need we need this to come out, don't we? Like this somehow. Is that what you mean? Oh, no, the depth yes. of the drill will be another eight millimeters into the bone. So okay. Yeah, it's the um, I, I th the drill. Maybe if you can. Yeah, sorry. I th I think if you can just give us um, a little bit time to think about it, and then we'll okay. get back to we'll we'll get back to you on that one. I think. Okay. If okay. that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So let's just finish this quickly. Um, just one more thing is if if we wanted to put like metal sleeves in here. We can go to the, we've got a few Stecco ones um, from a company called Stecco. And I'll just take a small little one because my, my implant sleeve is quite small at the moment. And we can append that and then we can take this one, shift left click. And then in the guide module, we can simply flick it exactly to where we want it to be. So we're going to just select and place insert like that. And then we can rotate this to wherever you want to rotate it. And then we can make a hole going through it. So this, this, this creates an object around it at 0 0.1 millimeter. So if they are too tight, for example, or too loose, this is where you're going to be setting your value, your clearance.
Okay, and then we're gonna make a hole going through it. So this is very simple to do, and then you'll, you'll end up with something like this. Of course, now we've got, we've got this intersection because we should have done that before we actually cut out the, the actual um, um, guide cutters and the hole cutters, because I would have made the hole cutter a little bit bigger. Mind you, we can still do that if we wanted to. Okay, we'll just go to expose the hole cutters. I can take this one, scale it like that. And then what I'll do is we're going to then clear the guide, but this says, yeah, clear the guide. Sorry, make a hole for the guide. There we go, okay, perfect. Okay, lastly, this is also a new feature. We're going to select all of the components we want the fitting surface to be cut. So we don't have to cut one and then the next and the next, the next. We can take this one, shift left click and shift left click all of the components you want the, the tissue to be cut. So cut fitting surfaces for all selected objects. So in, in the past, we, we had a few issues and this, this makes it easier. So I'm going to just have a look at this and this is perfectly nicked out even on the sides of our, our sleeve here. And then what we can do, if you laser sintering, for example, you cannot laser sinter when an object is intersecting an object. At the moment, this is fine for 3D printing, but if you laser centering, it is not okay. We need one object, and so we need to Boolean this, to, uh, unify this together. So we're gonna take this one, shift, left click, select, and then use this button, unify selected sleeve to selected objects. And that will then unify this to, to that. And if, if I go into my, cross section, we can see this has become a one object now. And this is fit for laser sintering. Of course, you'd make it thinner because it's quite thick. All right, Wolfgang, how much time have we got left? I can still make a crown if we've got enough time. Uh, can you or, make on, a crown on in two minutes? <laughs> yes, I think I can. Maybe so we'll we're going to... it by three minutes. Okay, make so what... <clears throat> What I'll do is we're going to go back to the component module and I'm going to be looking for so a, a Medentica abutment and we <clears throat> I think we used um, an RI implant and we're going to use a um, connection here. It's just for use now. The just ASC use the ASC flex, Michael, because that gives you 25 degrees. ASC flex, is that the one? Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. this one? Yeah, yeah, one of those, one. whichever diameter you had the implant. Well, we, you did randomly take, I think it was four millimeters. All right, so we've got this, this one, we're gonna go into transparent mode, select the, uh, the actual abutment there, link these two, this will turn blue. Then what we're gonna do is this is our destination. So select, um, select destination and then take this one, match position to destination. And that will flick that straight into where we want it to be. It's perfect. Then what we want to do is we want to join the two up. Let's just give it some color because I can't really see what's going on with this one. So model designer, just find yourself a color tab like this, or let's delete the color, okay? back to the component module. Now what we need to do is we need to say, we need to name this fixture. So this becomes a fixture. And then this, be, we're gonna select our abutment and we're going to then join the two up like that. So that's joined it up. So if you have implant surgery or whatever, this could actually be, you know, you could mill this crown out if you wanted to, out of whatever material you wanna use, okay. Now, there's, we want to still make a hole going through this, right? We've, we've got a, we, we have selected and set our angle, which is over here, okay? Now we can use this one 
or we can use our whole cutter. So I'll just bring in the whole cutter. So we're gonna select fixture and create whole cutter. Now this whole cutter we've used before, we don't need it. It's this specific one that we want to be using. So if we have a, a degree of, I don't know, Wolfgang, what did you say? Um, Up to 25, but you don't even have that there. Or 15. I think it was 15 that you used. Hmm. 15, 15 degrees. Yeah. So in the item menu, we can actually see how much it is, 15 degrees. So you'd set, you'd set that over there. And then all you need to do is select your actual component and make a hole. If you have other components, it will make holes in those components as well. well. Before you make the hole, you could set that to the um, diameter of the hole. Some screw heads will try to give a bit of clearance which is you could actually bring in a Medentica screw there. We've got those in there and that'll tell you the dimension of the actual screw head. Then you'd add maybe 100 microns or a little bit more on either side. Okay, so the screw is over there. Yeah, so you could just append okay. that, just one of those, whichever is the, the correct one. You'd look that up in the catalog. So that's over here. Okay, so, th so that screw, for example, would be 2.25 mils. Th that's what you're talking about, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so you, you have to be generous and put some space on the either side. So I'd, I'd say, you know, at least 2.6 mils or something like that. Yeah, this one is 2.5 in, in default. So you put 2.6 over here, 2.6. And, and then you'd make the hole going through there. So select that and make a hole going through there. Okay, so that's made our hole perfectly there. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, good. And then the contacts, you just do a Boolean operation on that for now. Well, with the crown and bridge work, we'd actually use a crown and bridge work mod module to, to make our, to design yeah, our contacts. Of course, the contact areas need to be uh, blocked out as well. There's no use to using a, a contact point that's got curvature and undercut because then you'd have to adjust that with a burr and we don't want to do that. So, and yeah, and offsetting the contact areas. Excellent, Michael, I think you've done an amazing job. Thank you. Except the implant guy, the, the, it's slightly out of, you know, you could have got a better, better alignment there. <laughs> Rub it in. <laughs> yeah. right, stop screen oh. share. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Great. So microphones open. Your chance to ambush Michael with questions. Something you can't <laughs> answer, please. How would you change the orientation of the sleeves? You know, sometimes you have anti rotational on the implant itself or on the abutment. How do you change it when you put the oh, screw? Yeah. You, you, you go into the items menu and then you just go, um, just set it to one of the, I think it's a Z, Z axis, and just change that to 180 degrees and you'll see that abutment uh, just flick and around. You have to like select the button. sleeve, yes. No, only, yeah, only sorry, when I call, yeah, the, the blue bit, because yes, the blue okay. bit is the, the parent, yep. Okay, so the parent one, okay. Mm. Ah, it's not a, a huge one. Hi, Robert. So. <laughs> Good Hi, to Robert. see you. Yeah, so, Michael, well done, eh? You, uh, you pulled it off again. Not yeah. like last yep. week, it was, it was uh, a problem. <laughs> It was a problem, yeah. But um, to, today I've released the update of the um, articulator module. Um, so Wolfgang and I, we worked quite hard on that thing. And it, it's just absolutely amazing how it can cut one tooth and the other tooth. It's just mind boggling. You know, when I look at it, I think, wow, <laughs> you know, this is like really awesome stuff. But we needed that for the Crown and Bridgework module. We wanted to release it like today or this week, but that's just kept me behind quite a lot. So uh, please understand with me. So I just need a little bit more time to get the occlusion of all of those crowns. Can you define quite a lot, Michael? <laughs> a day or two? I, or... 
a couplet. The weekend, hey, you get till the end of the weekend. The pressure's on. Not, not from you and I, Wolf. <laughs> I, I work at my own speed, as you, you guys know. And, um, but you know, I, I do understand we want to get this thing out as quick as what well we can. Excellent. Yeah, so, but just so we got the good news. Eh, Thank you. The, the TGA, we've got the uh, registered with the Therapeutic Good Administration, which is that is great. Nice. Yes. It's Congratulations. Great. Thank you, thank you. We have ah, to work on, have the C, on the CE part now. As we have the TGA, I think we can have a, a nice, uh, a nice update on the CE part. I, I will, uh, I will try to take some information about that, and then uh, we'll come back. Ah, uh, oh, please do. If we can get the CE for Europe, that's the way to go. And of course, ISO. So we we're working. We've got some amazing goals and. Yeah, it's a lot of red tape and a lot of paperwork. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. I have a question. Um, yes. mm. um, did you work on uh, Joe movements? Uh, um, you, you know, there is uh, some uh, some uh, some uh, tools you can uh, um, have Joe movements like the Mojo. Did you work uh, on uh, when we export five? I, I contact you uh, a, a time ago. Did you yes. work on it? Or? So, yeah, it's um, we are working on it. The the tracker is successfully transmitting all the coordinates, which is amazing. That's a, a, that's ours, yeah. Our but tracker. not sorry, the module. Module. Yeah, oh, the, yeah, the module was. Yeah, they have approached us. The um, I've had a look at this the CSV spreadsheet, and they've got many, many, many data points. So, um, to be honest with you, it's it's a big project if we take this one on. And ideally, we want to do it, but you know the way we've got our spreadsheet, we've got um, five five columns running X, Y, Z, and then we've got two. No, so six. We've got three rotational columns running of data. The module, I think it's got, I don't know if it's about 20. So instead of, I don't think they've, I might be, might be wrong in saying that, but they've got each X, Y, Z coordinate, even for rotations is broken in X, Y, Z. The formula for an actual rotation equation seems to be missing but i might be wrong there this explains the many columns i but think it's because there is a, a lot of tracker on the mojo and so they they gain all the tracking because there is a live camera um, so yeah so each each rotation has yes, got yeah. a xyz um, coordinate yeah, so rather a, than uh, an equation that does that for you but uh, yeah we would love to do it um but it's been very busy. Um, Thank so. you for all you do. <laughs> it's yeah, uh, very yeah. nice. <laughs> uh, that, module has contacted me though, um, but I, I kind of feel to... this. They, they might. I, I don't want to conflict with what we're doing and what they're doing. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm. Great. Um, Samira, so I'll get back to you with the, your question that you had, and I'm sure we can solve that so we can get the depth. At the moment, you're using an imp, just putting an implant in, aren't you, for the fixation pin then? Is that working? We have done a case for uh, lower mandible, yes, and um, uh, we want to um, make it more fixed because there was only for ETs. Uh, so I add a fixation bins and the guide, the uh, kit we have, it has these numbers that uh, the length of it was 20, the drilling part was uh, 8, and the other, um, the other length was 12. So I, I just don't know how to make it, so I fabricate it with a uh, small emblem with diameter of 2 uh, and the length of 8, and the length of the sleeves that you have made uh, by pressing SZ, I make it 12. Okay. So uh, that should it, it, works for, it works for the posterior. They, they were free. It works for the posterior, but the anterior, because we block uh, out the modern, so it was 
uh, longer than the wanted one. So in the operation or in the surgery, um, I uh, make it shorter, but it was haphazard, you know, it, it wasn't with numbers, it wasn't exactly with numbers. Mm. We just make it shorter to make the drill or the fixation bin touch the bone, uh, especially in the anterior because we made it on the block out, block out model. But the other two, it was okay with it. Excellent. So the block oh, out I, I have two, two, two things to say, sorry. Um, first, I have made my first uh, surgery yesterday for all on four made with a uh, Swiss slicer and you know, it was okay. Uh, Congratulations. The guide was nice, but my surgery was not so nice. But, um, you know, you, you can be good everywhere. And the patient was okay. And I wish also to, uh, I also like to wish an happy birthday to Ivan. So, Ivan, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. That's your birthday. Yeah. Oh, wow. Happy birthday. Oh, cool. Here's here, here, cheers, glass of water. Cheers. <laughs> I think um, that's good. Michael, you can sing, can't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, um, Samir, I've seen some amazing work coming from you, to be honest. I mean, when you first started, we were communicating together. And then one day you posted me this, this implant guide, and I thought, wow this is just amazing stuff and uh, i mean the creativity amongst this group and users at the moment it's just absolutely overwhelming it's it's fantastic to see what is actually happening so thank, thank you, you for, for you know for for actually learning and working together with us and so on and together i'm sure we can make things even better you know cool one question, yeah, if, if I can ask. Um, it is about reports, about diagnosis report. So right now I just see uh, the report in the outliner for the abutments. But is there a chance that you put the information for the implant itself with the diameter and the length? And um, on top of it, how much distance you have to the implant length? That I can see that in the outliner and can make a screenshot and can send that information to the doctor. Did you get it, Michael? Um, not 100%. So you, you want to see the outliner in the, you want to see it in the yeah, actual today you made it, you Today you made the case and I just saw in the outliner window that um, by the abutment there stands the information about what kind of abutment standing there. What I would like to have is um, when I go to the outliner at the end, that I can see what, what implant I used, what diameter, what length of the implant, what distance to uh, the, uh, the guide cutters is, every yes. information on, on one little space. Yeah, look, you know, we, we find a report. We, we've, got a, we've got a CSV report that you can send out. So. In the like here, for example, in the guide, if you look at here, if you look at the outliner, we've used an implant here over here, implant list. Mm -hmm. So this implant list will give you the code number of which implant was used, and that implant presents itself in the middle of the actual workplace. It is hidden away at all times. So what we are using is we're using a duplicate copy of the implant that or whatever you've got the screw or wh whatever will be in the center of this actual thing and hidden away so it mm -hmm. actually creates a list of components so we've used this specific implant and we use the component here this is the the abutment the stacker abutment that we've used okay which mm -hmm. is over here so well, this I, guess, one is... uh, I guess I can add um, some notes. Um, if we are uh, in a planning center and we are just going to make some guides for other dentists to make, I guess we need some um, more uh, formula or report in, um, in a good way to make this report going to the dentist to see in maybe a column or something uh, to make this report more easily for handling. Um, the exported report, report, it's okay, but um, maybe we can make it more uh, uh, professional or make it more 
uh, obvious for other dents. If you if you want to be a planning center, and other dents are going to make the surgery, not not the one who made the, the, the guide. Uh, so it is just a note uh, for development or for improvement, uh, just to be considered. What we can do is be more user friendly, and we have the CSV, which is like a text file. And when you check, like in Pond Studio, you have a really nice PDF report with nice screenshot in color, and you have all the the reminder of the, the implant list. And I think it could be very helpful when I do surgery. You know, I just uh, glue it on the window, so I have everything in front of my eyes, and it, it kind of lag when we use the guide module. But we can make the export and after on the website you can imagine making a nice export because it's easy on a, a blender could not do it for the moment but i think we can do it with on the on the website part and we can we can also uh, perhaps do archive and archive our implant list on implant cases uh, i think it could be a nice uh, um, addition for the the web part but to do it in Blender, it will not be very possible because you can just export some text uh, description, not doing some fancy PDF things. What we, what we're yeah. doing at the moment, uh, we're using another software, and um, that software implant um, planning software has an app. So we're planning in in our hospital or in our lab. We plan the implant position. We send it to the app. The doctor can change everything in that app and then send the confirmation and then we print the guide. So I give then the, at the end, I make a report, I make screenshots with the implant itself. I make a screenshot of, um, I have to, screen to check. I even give them a surgical drilling sequence. So they have all the informations at that point for every position of the implant, what they have to use. And that is the target I think should be at the yeah. end. I it's a good idea but to do it website related like uh, baptista says i mean that's that's probably easier to to implement yeah. hey, michael yeah, poss po possibly we're a little bit limited in blender we can export the you know the list of components maybe i can work on that list of components a bit better so that we've got a better text you know so it, it'll all be on one on one piece of paper instead of having three or four or five different exports we can have all the exports in one specific printout and one i think document. that can Right. That can easily be arranged. So, you know, what type of implants we've, the, the codes, the number of the product codes, the implant, the depth of the implants, the angles of the implants. And so we, we've got all of that in one one list. I think that's good. It'll also cut to, cut down from all of the different buttons, I think, which is quite, yeah, let's, let's consider so that. If you say that as a patient name as such, will, will that maybe, can you make that the heading then, Michael? Possibly. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can look at that. At the moment, it saves in that directory which you have. So if you've got mm. Mrs. X or whatever, it'll save it in Mrs. X's uh, folder. Yeah. Yes. So you've, you've got it all. You've got it all there. Mm. Excellent. Good point. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for raising that. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Nice. So, um, last thing is always update your modules. You know, um, so sometimes I go on on TeamViewer and I see people have really outdated stuff. We've moved like way further, and you know, the if you got a quick internet, the model designer takes a little bit longer. The guide module mine loads up within like six seconds or whatever. It's quite good just to click on that update module button and then start doing your work because then you know you are up to speed with, with everything. But by the way, just one thing, you know, when you do the update via Blender, we don't have the lesson in, into it because it's too heavy for the download. So you, you, you just skip this part and people should if they want to install back the lesson, they should take the installer. But what I tell them into my translation is that they have the lesson in the blue folder. But in fact, uh, uh, there is no lesson in the blue folder. Perhaps we can do this, you know, helping people uh, just updating their module, but being able to keep their lesson not 
having to re-download the installer. And uh, perhaps we can do another folder, you know, uh, another blue folder with all the um, the STL and all the the um, the different. Um, uh, when when you, when you click on when you click on that one, yes. the, the the top one oh, it says it. It. Okay. learn le learning files. Okay. All of the the teaching files are there. You can just you, you just click on that and you you can then download yes. that yes, that sir. file and then. And it's too learning. much hidden. That's very, that's very nice. But uh, we should make it like um, more obvious. Well, we, we initially had that in the, uh, we, we took that out of the update uh, feature because we want yes. to speed things up during the update process and all of this extra data would slow it down. So yeah, we, we probably want to make it more obvious way to find these learning files. Just push the video button. Yeah, I will, I will change my transition. Okay. Yeah, so if you've got problems with updating the any module, um, it is possible that the internet speed is too slow. And if it's, we find that if it's under 25 megabytes per second, um, you can end up with no scripts in, in your folder. So that's unfortunate. Or if you close Blender down during this process, Blender might even say not responding. And people think, oh, you know, it's crashed. Then they close it down. And then, of course, their menus don't work. So if, if the internet speed is too slow, then you've got to just use the installer instead, which does exactly the same thing. It overrides the old version. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining. And uh, we really appreciate it. And we learn from each other. And Ivan, you have a really good birthday still. He looks Stay very off the computer. Better. Have you had water today? You just have water. Yeah. <laughs> Bring waters. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You celebrated <laughs> last night. Thank you. Ivan, <laughs> mm. you were right. speaking about a printer last last time. What is the, the 